Hi everyone, welcome back to Mediocre Manor. Today is day three of our 30 days on Mediocre Manor, um, video number three. And today it's raining out, it's been pouring all day long, so we've been doing mostly inside work today. Stephanie's next door in her office reading books and sewing and um, playing with animals. And I'm here in this eBay room and working on a few projects here, which I'll show you briefly. And I also have a question for some of you older folks who maybe know a thing or two about cars and hubcaps. I've got a mystery hubcap here that I don't know what kind it is. So as soon as I'm done showing you these things, I'll show you that hubcap. And um, if anybody can figure out what it is, we'll send you something special. Um, so this here is an H.H. Scott amplifier that I found at a yard sale this uh, past Thursday. And I only, had, I only paid $5 for it. Um, these things sell for a few hundred dollars. Well, there's there's one that's working right now on eBay for almost eight hundred dollars. Unfortunately, I can't get this one to power up. So today I've been trying um, trying a few different things, but so far it's been unsuccessful. I might have to sell it for parts. Um, also been working on these vintage tins. Um, we really like vintage things here. Something like this might be good if you had a vintage trailer or. When I'm done with one of my, um, well, mine's a 70s. I think these may be more 60s, 50s or 60s, but a lot of people like to collect these kind of things. And as you can see, the top one, I don't know if you can see it in the light, but the top one says T, and it's got like brown, some kind of brown dirt in there. I spent the morning cleaning out this one here, and it's much better looking um, afterwards. So, uh, and the last thing that I'll be working on as soon as I'm finished here. I've got a vintage Gillette safety razor, and this is plated in gold. So it all needs to be cleaned up. There's actually some soap on it that um, I'll get it all nice and cleaned up and then post it up on eBay. And uh, for those of you who don't know, eBay is how we make most of our money here on the farm. It's the main source of income, and um, I just go out to um, estate sales and yard sales, buy things and clean them up, put them on eBay, and it's that easy. Um, so as far as the mystery item, here it is. I bought four of these hubcaps at a yard sale or an estate sale about a m maybe two months. I was going to say a month and a half, but maybe two months. And this logo here, we're having trouble figuring out exactly what it belongs to. I've heard people say Oldsmobile. Some people say Lincoln. Um, so far, I haven't been able to find exactly what it is, so if anybody knows, um, I would appreciate you sharing that with us, sharing that information with us so that we can get that posted up on eBay and hopefully make some money. So today's video is going to be basically a solar 101, but when we say solar 101, basically how to read the inverter and kind of what to look for on a daily basis. And um, it's even a little more than that. As, as you know, Amy, my sister Amy, is going to be living in the cabin temporarily while she does, um, while she completes her stealth off-grid van build and um, so before Harry left you know Amy's never lived in an off-grid situation before so um, she kinda wanted to get some tips you know what should she look for uh, how much power can she use at night how to how, how should she read the inverter every morning and so it was kind of um, the inspiration for this video so when Harry and I were out there recording a few days ago it was the day before he left. Um, we recorded this footage specifically for Amy and specifically for somebody that may be staying in an off-grid home or a van. You know, they're all the same. Anywhere you have solar panels and an inverter and a solar charge controller or something like that, you may need a little bit of help reading it and even understanding exactly what's going on. So hopefully this video sheds some light on that. Um, if you have any further questions, please let us know. We'll go into a little bit more detail in future videos, but we wanted to just keep this one simple and to the point. Um, and um, I know a lot of you, it's probably, you know, people that follow this channel already know this kind of thing. Most likely installed your whole solar system yourself, so you understand this thing. But um, we're kind of just throwing this up there for people who may not know. And so, you know, hopefully it helps somebody. And um, hopefully... Um, even if you are an experienced solar veteran, you still enjoy it. 
And um, that's all we can hope for here. Any comments or questions or concerns we would appreciate. Um, if you could give us a little thumbs up and like the video, that helps too. And um, thanks for watching and we'll see you all soon. Here we are at the equipment shed. This is where all the works of my solar system are, except of course for the panels which are on the roof. Um, got a door this year. Oh yeah. We'll open the door. We'll take a take a walk in. As we said, the battery bank is the heart of the system. You're going to say, well, it's the solar system. Aren't the panels the heart? No. The battery bank is the heart of the system. Uh, it's where all the energy gets stored. It's 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 what you it, it tells you what you can and can't run and um, for how long. The purpose of the panels is to is to recharge the battery bank every day. That's what you want. That's what your solar panels are for. So you size the panels to fit the battery bank. You size the battery bank to fit your needs. Um, the inverter. Uh, this is the inverter. Is what converts the in my case 24 volts DC direct current to household current, which is 110 AC. Uh, and um, so the inverter, this inverter is 2,000 watts. So that tells you that the maximum power going to the house is 2,000 watts. What can you run on 2,000 watts? Well, I got an AC in there that's 450 watts, for example. I have a fridge that's 100 watts when it's running. I have a microwave that's 1100 watts, that's more than half the system, a coffee maker that's six or 700 watts. The lighting is LED, which is a great thing for off the gridders because it uses so little power. I think I got three, I don't know, 19 watts, so if all three of the lights are on in there, because it's three rooms, one light per room, then um, then you got only 60 watts. So. Um, so the fridge doesn't take much, the lighting doesn't take much, the microwave is a real power hog, but luckily you only use microwaves a few seconds at a time. The AC, moderate, um, but it cools down quickly in there because the floor footprint is so small. So, what I do every morning, and what I hope our guest Amy will do, is every morning when at first light I come out and I look at this display. This, this is given me the status of the entire system. Um, the the ha first thing to see is the little smiley face. Let's see if I can get it. I can turn the uh, I can turn it on if you want. We can light it up. There you go. Yeah, that's nice. See the little smiley face? That's that's I guess solar for dummies. If the little smiley <laughs> face is smiling, that's a good thing. The battery is all black, which means it's fully charged. The other way to tell that it's fully charged is that it's reading 27.6 volts, which is the float voltage. You can see over on this side. Oh, you could see. We can see it. Okay. Um, well, let me just light it up again. That we have 100 volts coming out of our panels, but at only 0.9 amps, at only 9 tenths of an amp. Um, this is the controller saying the battery's charged. Boys, we don't need a whole lot more. See, so we don't. So the 27.6 is what they call the float voltage. This is the voltage that it's going to maintain the charge at. It'll be higher than that if it needs to to, to bulk charge the battery during the day. If it's not fully charged, it'll it'll actually raise the voltage to 29 or something. Um, but what I hope Amy will look at is that number, 27.6. By morning, that will be 25 or 24.5 or 24, depending on how much stuff she used overnight. I hope we don't see it much lower than 24, because that's when you start to shorten the life of your batteries. So that, But that gives you a, cl a clue, at least, about whether you're within the limits of your system. If, you're, if in the morning, before the sun comes um, fully up, your your voltage is down below 24. You're using too much overnight, um, so you got to get that get that conservative mindset going and say, okay, I can't do that because we're drawing the bank down too low, and that's a thousand dollars worth of batteries. You mm -hmm. want it to last more than a year, so um, three years, all right. Well, 333 dollars a year to be free of ties to the grid. That's probably not so bad. Five years would be better. So. 
So that's what I do. I come out and I check my, my voltage. And um, the other thing is if the battery light is flashing, that's on the controller, that's also telling you that the batteries are fully charged. Oh, so you got really ways. three different ways to tell. The little black symbol, the fact that it's at float voltage, and the fact that the battery light is flashing over here. So it's pretty easy to tell when your batteries are fully charged. Um, now have you ever come out and has it ever approached the 24 number that you're worried about? Yeah, when I first installed it, I only had half the panels up, and I think I drew it down into the mm, 22 or 23 range, and it's like... Doing what? Well, right on the AC, but on oh. only half the panels, so it wasn't fully charging. I actually got out the generator, and re the, the, uh, the um, inverter has a battery charger built into it, so if you connect it to some other source of power, it will charge the batteries instead of depleting the batteries. Interesting. So, and yeah, how's that set up? Yeah, they, um, it comes with a little plug and you plug that, well, that in. That came with it? Yeah. Well, the plug didn't, but the connection to the plug did. Oh, down here. Yeah, which still needs its little cover on it. Yeah. The lawyer cover. Um, <laughs> but you plug that into, into the grid or into a generator and it will actually start to recharge the batteries as well as keep your um, cabin powered up. So. So there's another thing that Amy won't need to check because I've checked it. You need to check it periodically, but not constantly. And that is the um, the water level in the batteries. The um, these are wet cells. You can get all kinds of different batteries. These wet cells are the least expensive, and they work pretty good. But they come with a little more maintenance. And the maintenance is pop the covers off check the cells to make sure there's water in there and if they right you, here yep you pop the cover off while well, you guys they're, they're just like car batteries you pop them off there's three on this side three on this side you got to see make sure the water is above the plates if the water goes below the plates bad if the water is above the plates you're good if you have to add water you need to add distilled water you can't use tap water the ions and crap in and um, minerals in tap water will damage your batteries by distilled water somewhere um, like for irons you know they always say put distilled water in your steam iron um, and use that to, to bring your keep your water levels up. Now, in over, what have we done, a year and two or three months with this battery mm. bank, and I've, and I've checked them a few times, like, I don't know, three or four months. Every three or four months, you check them. Um, if they're not below the plates, you don't worry about them. If they're below the plates, you got to add distilled water. I have not had to add water to these batteries yet, but I'm gently using them. I'm not drawing them way down. So the further you draw them down, the... Um, the more likely they are to use water. The charging process breaks the water up into hydrogen and oxygen, which is why you also got to keep your battery room vented. You don't want hydrogen building up in there. So, um, so that's the thing that Amy doesn't have to worry about, but but the owner maintainer, you know, of the system does have to worry about. Well, thanks for watching. That's it for today. Um, I hope you all learned something, even if it was something small. And stay tuned for video number four tomorrow. I'm not exactly sure what the topic's going to be, but we're going to have another video for you. It'll be video number four of 30 days here at Mediocre Manor. So um, we look forward to seeing you all tomorrow.